Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are on the planet. And welcome, welcome, welcome to today's Bull versus Bear webinar on Monday, the 23rd of September. Steve Miley here on the call for trade day. Welcome, everyone. Going to go through a usual run through with a slight twist for um, a Monday when we look at the shape of the week, slightly bigger picture outlook. We'll look out into the week, see where the potential volatility points, see where the uh, potential um, extra activity we can see due to fundamental macroeconomic activity that's going on. And then that gives us an idea where, again, markets might be more volatile, might be more likely to trend. Um, are more likely to move more aggressively and then we can maybe temper and then that might mean in other parts of the week the market's going to be less volatile more range bound and then we can maybe not necessarily change our strategies but we might kind of tweak our strategies depending if we think the market's going to be um, more volatile or less volatile depending on um, activity so below where you are we have our technical analysis our, our macro analysis and our um, news columns the three columns below where you're watching this if you're watching this on a live stream or on the catch-up you won't be there if you're watching on youtube but if you're watching it live or on the catch-up below in the dashboard You'll see those three three sections, and we have our macro matters, which is our more in depth recap of last week and what we've got in the week going ahead. Um, and then we also have the um, the macro matters, and we have the weekly recap like this, the weekly recap and look ahead um, that does just that. Looks ahead, um, it's just a bit more of a summary of of all of that. Um, and then you also get the technical analysis reports on the left hand column. And on the right hand column, we have the news section. So I'm not going to go through all the everything that's in the macro matters. If you want to dive in, you can see more um, detail in there. We'll just look through um, what the main themes are. So um, global stocking is at uh, all time high. So um, the S&P um, and the Dow Jones both closed at record levels. Um, on a weekly basis last week, uh, the S&P up 1.7, 19.6% year to date gain. NASDAQ 4% um, below its historic peak shield, but boosted by a 2.5% jump last week post Fed. So um, markets still looking positive, not just in the US, in Europe as well. Um, the Italian index, France, CAC, France's CAC and German DAX. Um, offset a slight decline in the euro stocks, pan-European equity indices. Uh, the Nikkei was also up the Shanghai, um, China's Shanghai Composite Index and the Hong Kong Hang Seng Index were posted strong weekly games. So global stocks higher um, reacting to the Fed going big, basically, was the main driving force last week. So initially kind of a choppy session on, after the Fed on Wednesday, um, but we certainly saw the outcome of Thursday through Friday, uh, stronger equity indices. Yields actually went slightly higher, and we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that as we go forward and we look at the yield chart. So I will talk a little bit about the slightly higher yields. So why when the Fed cut and they went bigger, are we seeing higher yields? Well, I'll talk a little bit about that as we go further. So bond markets were lower in price, higher in yields. Um, the tone, we didn't really get much of a kind of clue about where we're going to be going um, with the future rate cuts. And we'll have a look at the CME tool. Personally, I don't think they're going to go big again. I did have a feeling that they would go big, um, but I wasn't 100%. I thought they might still be more cautious. My thoughts were they probably should go big. Now I think they might temper it. Um, unless the data starts to really go negative, I think we might go now 225s um, into the end of the year. And the market's kind of pricing in somewhere between... 25 um, to a total of 50 basis points and 75 basis points really um, going into the end of the year with the with an outside chance of 100. I don't think they're going to go big twice again. I do not think we'll get two more 50s. Um, I think the most we'll get is a, another 50 and 25. And my view is we'll probably get two more 25s in here. But we'll talk about that when we come to the Fed Watch tool. Um, going into um, sorry, also last week we had the Bank of England. Uh, the Bank of England weren't expected to move rates, and they didn't move rates. Also, um, Bank of Japan left rates unchanged, um, which was widely anticipated as well. Um, and um, we saw the yen initially strengthened after the announcement in here. 
Um, so they're looking still for stability, ongoing mar- market uncertainty. Um, Bank of England um, weren't expected to go, um, but chances are we might get a, another rate cut from the Bank of England before the end of uh, the um, year. Going into this week, where are the focus points? Well, global flash PMI data, we get that out today. We've already had for Europe. I'll talk a bit of that as we go forward. Powell is speaking on Thursday um, and pre-recording remarks at the US Treasury Market Conference. Um, so that'd be interesting to see if we get anything more out of Powell on Thursday. We also have various Fed speakers going through the week. Obviously, they've been on the um, blackout period up until last week's meeting. We didn't really get much from the end at the end of last week. So it will be interesting um, if we get anything more um, out of the Fed this week. Clues to whether they're going to be continue with this these larger rate cuts or maybe temper them down going forward into the end of the year. And we also at the end of this week, an important data point, the US PCE data, personal consumption expenditure price index. Um, Obviously, that is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. And we're going to be looking at that um, at the end of the week. So we'll um, to see if we're getting inflation to continue to come down. If we do see that, then we could open the door to further uh, more aggressive rate cuts, uh, bigger rate cuts from the Fed. Going into this week, what are we watching as well? Well, we do have the Reserve um, the Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, their interest rate decision on Tuesday, um, and the same for the Swiss National Bank on Thursday. So RBA and SMB, or Tuesday and Thursday. Yes, they're more minor. Um, you know, they're not necessarily going to have a big impact onto the markets a lot of you guys are looking at, unless you're looking at the currency markets. But I think it's important to look at these other central banks as well, kind of see how dovish they are shifting. If they are shifting more dovish, if we get a global shift to more dovish, it's more likely then that we might see other central banks continue that dovishness. It might indicate that the um, the um, excuse me that the Fed may be even more dovish and continue this dovish tone that they expressed um, last week. Um, we also get the Bank of Japan policy meeting minutes um, on Thursday, and Powell is speaking on Thursday. But we do have other speakers as well going through the week. Uh, but Powell speaking on Thursday, that's going to be one of the main focal points on the data side today. We have the global flash PMI. Remember, this is not the ISM data. This is the data we get from S&P Global. And so the S&P Global data, we don't get the flash PMI. Remember, the flash PMI is the um, is the kind of heads up data. It's the data we get. So this is for September. So we're obviously only at the 23rd of September. The data comes out a week before the end of the month and we get the final data but the the data on this pmi data is from um a large majority so i think it's like 80 percent of the um the survey participants have um posted their survey results so it's kind of a uh, it doesn't usually change too much between the um the data we have from the flash pmi to the final data for the s p global data so that's going to be interesting to watch we get it from the us uh, a little later today um we'll talk about that as we go forward and we get um, also, the, the most important data, really, I think, of the week is this US PCE data. Remember, it's not the quarter on quarter data, which we get alongside the GDP data on Thursday. It's the PCE data, the month on month and year on year is the important data, which we get on Friday. So that's going to be a key point to watch, along with um, Powell's speech on Thursday and then today's global flash PMI data. Um, so that's the main focal points going through the week. If we go on to the, and there's the recap, just um, stating all the same, really. Um, if we go on to the calendar for today, you can see the data for Europe is already out. You can see a, um, completely red in here, pretty much across the board, apart from one day data point from the actually that data point is only not red because there's not a forecast on that one from the UK so all of these red in here that means missing expectations worse than expected so the French the German the eurozone and the UK data all coming in worse than expected not massively worse in some cases actually um, significantly worse France service data in here missed by nearly five points there that's significant miss in here um, and where else yeah a significant miss on the eurozone as a whole composite number a significant miss there also on the service sector for the um for the uh for the eurozone as a whole uh uk only just missing on its data so um but nevertheless misses which is negative in here and we have seen reaction in markets this morning the euro has weakened on anticipation that the ecb might go more dub become more dovish 
more in- anticipation for rate cuts from the ECB because of the weaker data in the eurozone, as we see here, um, and um, a significant move lower um, in the euro because um, lower um, interest rates are kind of negative for the currency. So we're seeing the currency sell off today. Looking ahead into today, um, we had the S&P Global Flash PMI data um, for manufacturing services and composite data for the US. That comes up at 9.45 Eastern time today. 9.45 Eastern today. We do have two Fed speakers, Bostic in just 19 minutes on the hour, coming up on the hour. Bostic um, in 19 minutes time. And then we have Kashkari, who is more on the hawkish side. Kashkari coming up at one o'clock Eastern today. So Kashkari at one o'clock, Bostic in 19 minutes time. And in between, we're at 9.45 Eastern, all that um, flash PMI data from S&P Global Pool for the US. We need to be watching those. So three potential trigger points in here for market moves going into today. Let's look at five things to start your day. So um, US stock futures pointed to a slightly higher open with businesses hovering near record highs kind of already covered that euro retreated and german bond yields fell after lower than expected french service pmi have already flagged that um so negative um on the european some of the european numbers in there we've already looked talked about those uh wait for data gold reached a, a a record um high this morning ahead of um us data and so we're going to be keeping an eye on that data. Euro-wise, US private sector economy shrank. So we've already spoken about that. That's that PMI data. And um, key segment, the German yield curve normalized after the release of traders, but the European Central Bank will need to accelerate. We've already covered that. Um, China's announced that there are plans for a rare briefing on the economy, just as it cut one of its short-term policy rates. So looks like the PBOC potentially going to be coming in and um, trying to stimulate the economy. Um, that's the, us after expectations, but the most bolsters expectations for the PBOC to lower rates after the Fed cut ease presses on China to defend its currency. So the Fed cutting rates, uh, moving its uh, interest rate lower, takes pressure off of the um, Chinese um, and defending the currency and then opens the door to lower interest rates as well. Um, Intel shares um, rose in pre-market according to, um, because of Apollo made an offer, but to uh, an equity like investment, um, talking about a big M&A deal there, comes just days after Qualcomm said to have floated a friendly takeover, raising the prospect of one of the biggest ever m a deals so that's kind of interesting um it could have a little bit of an impact on the nasdaq but probably not gonna have a major major impact on um stock indices right here right now so just running through kind of everything we've covered on the headlines euro retreats weak data spurs bets on ecb cut in here france's bond market risk jumps amid the political um concerns um, your future steady with focus on Fed speakers. We've already spoken about that. And then the data we have coming up today. China stimulus hopes rise of PBOC cuts rates and plans a briefing. We've already spoken about that. Um, from Reuters, Fed moles inflation undershoot Europe um, contracts. So that's the Europe contract in the PMI data. Fed mole in the inflation undershooting here um, on that um, uh, PCE data that we're cu- coming up on Friday. Euro drops as glum PMI stokes bets on more ECB um, easing. We've already spoken about that. Um, with that data, Eurozone business activity unexpected contracts. So we've already spoken about that as well. Um, on the overnights in here, Asia, uh, Nikkei um, notably up, one and a half percent up. The Hang Seng little changed overnight um, on Monday. Uh, European indices in there, kind of mixed. Uh, French uh, down in here, the French CAC down uh, nearly three tenths on the back of that those negative um, data points we saw. Uh, the DAX actually doing okay though. Uh, because of the expectation of uh, 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 more rate cuts from the ECB, boosting the DAX, but obviously the French CAC um, getting more damage because the, of the uh, negative numbers actually coming out of France, and the FTSE is a little change, just slightly lower in here. And we go to the, oh, it has not opened up in here. Well, this would open up, so... Markets now are anticipating, yeah, there was a Reuters poll there, I've just jumped off the page, but um, 225 is the Reuters poll indicating 225 is the expectation was kind of alongside what I'm thinking um, I'm going into. So um, going into the end of the year uh, from the Fed, but um, here we have on the overnight, seen a little change, slightly um, higher for anything, markets just nudging a little bit higher in here this morning. Here's the Fed watch tool. So going to November, you know, flip a coin on whether it's 25 or 50, um, 50-50 pretty much there um, on the either a 25 basis point cut or a 50 basis point cut in here. And if we go out to December, 
um, we see in here this right hand column at 23% is just for um, 225s. Then we have the, the, the bigger chance of us being a total of 75 basis points in here. So a 50 and a 25. And then only um, in here, um, only a 26% chance that we get 250s. So 250 is very unlikely. Um, and But also the market also pricing in 225 is unlikely in this pricing, really. And then we get a 50 and a 25. Um, my view is that I think we might get 225s, but um, I don't see 250s either. Um, but you, we, might, we might get another 50 out of the Fed, depending on how the data goes between now and the 7th of November. We've also got the, obviously, the twist of the... Um, of the election now the election i as i remember the election is right ahead of um that 7th of november meeting who can help me out what the u.s election i know i do all this every time but um u.s election 2024 date um it's the fifth yeah so it's just it's just um after the um the uh, u.s election uh we get that um meeting so and whether we have a result by then you know there's a good chance we might not you know as we've had in previous years we might not have a a, a definite result so that's going to be interesting as well it shouldn't sway the fed it shouldn't sway the fed but um who knows depending on what might be happening at the time um but um moving to the uh yield chart now you can see the yields have been going higher and you might think why are yields going higher when we've had kind of quite a dovish move by the fed remember this is the long end this is the us 10-year yield the longer end of the curve is more reactive to the um the economy so what concerns about the economy we'll see the market move to um uh, higher prices lower yields if we're concerned about the economy so this is more a reaction to the market is now more con more comfortable the economy is going to go into soft landing mode so that means you sell bonds remember bonds are a safe haven sell bonds so bonds being sold lower prices higher yields so this is not so much a reaction to the um the uh, uh expectations about where the fed are going this is more uh, this is like back up in yields to higher yields is more a reaction to um the fact that the Fed went big and the fact that the Fed went big means there's um, less likely that we're going to get a hard landing, that we're going to get a soft landing, no recession. So that's positive um, for the economy. So that's then therefore negative for bonds. Bonds go lower in price, higher in yields. And we see that if we run through the um, the, the market reports, you know, you can see um, we did get a significant sell off, you know, after the Fed in here in the 30 year and the 10 year. Look, So they're definitely damaged. We're still holding out. Um, Actually, in these, we're, we've now got a more negative bias. seeing the topping patterns going in there. But if you go and look at the five years, less damage in here, although we still have a downside bias. And if you go into the two year, a far less damage, right? So remember the, the short end of the curve, there's two years more in consolidation sideways. The short end of the curve, more reflective of where the central bank is. The longer end of the curve in here, more reflective of where the um, where the economy is at, okay? So lower prices in here indicates a, a better economy, okay? Because you sell bonds, because they're a safe haven, right? So you sell bonds and you buy stocks if you believe that the economy is going to be okay. So this is a vote of confidence, this move lower in the longer end of the yield curve is a vote of confidence in the economy. And the fact that the two year is going sideways is because there's still anticipation of a more dovish central bank. OK, um, and if we look at the where the stock in these are, yes, we had a slight dip at the very end of last um, at the end of last week. Uh, but the market's certainly looking positive, as we said earlier, S&P 500 up at the all time highs in the year posted back in the summer. Um, and the Nasdaq still some ways off of those highs, but actually got right back up to the August highs in here. Um, before just slightly retreating. So those are the next kind of levels to, to really push up to and through 25 to one and a quarter um, on the NASDAQ on the uh, December contract. Remember, we are on the December contract there. So just looking at this, we do have like, the market has wobbled a little bit at the end of last week. This is the NASDAQ on the 30 minute chart. It's got our undercut all the way down here, though, down below like 19,950 um, to be more negative in here. Um, and at the moment, kind of sitting in mid range from the end of last week in here in this big sort of flag pattern. My view is still be it to the upside. Um, it's all going to be really watching that date, those data points that we have today from the uh, the PMI data, but also watching out for what um, the Fed speakers are going to say. But my view would still be upside from here. Um, if you look at the daily, it all looks still fairly firm in here uh, market had that big boost on um, Thursday and then holding it on Friday and still holding on to those gains um, going into today and on the daily on the uh, say ES in here we've got um, we've actually cleared 
um, to all time highs back at the end of last week. Then a slight dip, but then a rebound back on uh, Friday into the close and then holding on to the gains and nearing to go to the 30 minute chart. We see the market in here sort of more in a consolidation mode, but for me, that's still pointing higher within this kind of flag formation that we have. So you can see in here, we've got the big push up. This is like a bigger flag formation, and for me, still pointing to the upside. So an upside bias going into today, but remember, we do have those two Fed speakers. We also have the PMI data as well to be watching out for. So keeping your eyes on all those, we've got um, who was it that we have? It's Williams, was it? No, not Williams, Bostic. Bostic on the wires in now nine minutes. So watching out for Bostic. Then a little after that, 9.45 Eastern, the PMI data. And then later today, Kashkari at, at uh, 1300, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to wish you all a great trading day. Um, take care, stay safe, and we'll be back with you tomorrow for another Bull versus Bear webinar. Bye.